So a few months ago I did a video on what makes great drummers great, and I included a little parody of what so many of them say when you ask them how they got good. Paradiddles, rudiments, double paradiddles, play on pillows, play along to Sly and the Family Stone, singles and doubles, the 26th essential, rudiments. <laughs> And my guess is, when some of us hear the word rudiments, we have a similar reaction we'd have if somebody asked us to eat our flavorless pallid vegetables that had been boiled so long all the vitamins were gone. We pictured the practice pad in that sad, fluorescently lit, cigarette smoke tinged carpet closet at the back of Magic Mike's guitars and stuff, and Mr. Jensen standing over us as we played our rudiments. Standing between us and the kit on the other side of the room like a diabolical gatekeeper. Eat your vegetables if you want dessert. In fact, it's your rudiments if you ever want to play that kit. All your friends were already in bands, and it was just you and the practice pad and no friends. Well, it doesn't have to be like that. As I've discovered in later life, rudiments can be fun. and there are ways to incorporate them into your kit practice so you can save your practice pad for late nights in front of the TV. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you four of my favorites. Stay tuned. Let's start off with why drum rudiments. Because it wasn't until I was in college when I met a teacher named Ryan Korb, who had studied with Jeff Hamilton, who figured out how to make them fun again. In high school, I'd been watching a lot of marching videos, so everything I did was super rigid and from the wrist, and without much rebound. In college, I was learning to play classical snare drum, so we worked a lot from the fingers. But it was Ryan's Jeff Hamilton technique that really put things together for me. Is this thing angled too low? Hang on. Okay, that's better. And this was around the time I was switching from traditional back to matched around the kit. Ryan's method became the canon I would teach kids during the years of... Ryan's method became the canon I would teach kids during the years of my life. I would take a bus to Jersey two days a week, a train to the Bronx two other days of the week, and do five or six house calls to teach lessons. Anyway, it was centered on letting the drum head do the work for you and making sure you got out of the way of the rebound. By the way, this is my pad. Is this thing angled too low? Hang on. Since the last pad I owned is probably in storage in Montana. But the whole point of this video is you can do rudiments on the kit. That's more like it. So Ryan would teach full rebound legato strokes, something like this. And also an approach to rudiments that I would call ballistic, where stick height and distance correspond to timing. Probably the most famous drummer with this approach is Joe Morello. But of course you can see Jeff Hamilton use it as well. It produces a warm legato sound. And when I think of up and coming drummers who use this approach, it's textbook Steve Lyman. Anyway, before I lose 100% of the just get to the look already folks, let's look at exercise one. Exercise one, singles and doubles. One thing Ryan taught me was bouncing each stick individually, then together to make singles. <laughs> to be fair, pretty much all my teachers taught this. The purpose is to make sure both sticks are rebounding freely. So you're getting the same sound with both. So there's that classic exercise where you transition between singles and doubles. But I decided, why not incorporate the kit? And I like odd length phrases. So I did this. You can start with isolating the hands, then playing them together, like this.
And I like to switch feet, so I'm just incorporating both. But the meat and potatoes is when you transition between singles and doubles. I like to do it medium slow, cause that's hard. Then get it pretty fast, which is actually a little bit easier because you can just lower the stick height. Final wrinkle, I like to do groups of five, six, and seven. So we just did five, six would sound like this. And seven would sound like this. Guys, super quick, this is Nate beaming in from the future, as you can tell from the lower video resolution. I'm shooting this on my iPhone. Just wanted to let you know that if you're watching this lesson and you'd like the transcription of the exercises, you can just click the link below this video. It'll take you to a page where you can download those transcriptions. You can get them with no strings attached, or if you want, you can get them and subscribe to my mailing list. And if you want to subscribe to my mailing list, I'll send you a video mini course that'll make your playing better in the next three weeks than it's gotten in the last six months. There's my pitch. I'm out. Okay, but now we're just practicing rudiments. How is this any different from the eat your slaw? Besides, I've argued before that playing the 26 essential rudiments start to finish, agnostic to whatever else you might be trying to accomplish on the drum kit, is not always the most efficient way to become better. Like, not super targeted, like doing a bodybuilding weightlifting routine if you're a sprinter. So what gives? Well, first benefit. Break out of your ruts. Actually, let's move this to the drums. Okay, so there are ultra-targeted things you should learn on the drums if you want to get better faster. Like the things in my solo course. Instead of just playing paradiddles or six-stroke rolls on a pad, you're actually double-utilizing that time to learn something that lays logically on the drums. But rudiment practice isn't work. It's like meditation or gardening. It's cool precisely because it's divergent. It's a much older system than the David Garibaldi Thomas Pridgen stuff, so it's also more timeless. That's why I said it'll break you out of ruts. You're studying something old and specific. All right already. So exercise I'm digging on numero deuce. Single and double paradiddles. So Ryan Korb's approach to paradiddles was to bounce them. And he didn't mind using the accent. Later on, John Riley asked me to try to even them out. Either way, it was a revelation to me that I could bounce paradiddles, because I always thought I had to articulate everything. In reality, it's a dance between single stroke bounces and articulating the doubles. Ergo, this exercise alternates between singles and doubles, and doubles and triples. I do this one as quickly as you can do it smoothly. The trick is keeping both stick tips in the center of the drum and making all the sounds even. The last part of this, if you want, is Alvin Nasheed, Marcus Gilmore idioms. You can pretend you're playing a slow swing and bounce off the ride cymbal or floor tom and fill in the spaces with diddles. Oh, didn't see you there. Should we talk about some flams? Flams are great because you can practice ride cymbalish groupings with both hands. Like, Here's what's going on with each hand in a flam paradiddle. But the flam isn't just playing your sticks in a double stop, either. It's more elegant. As I learned it, the stick creating the grace note should be just above the head, whereas the stick creating the accented stroke should be much higher. If you release both and just let them fall, you get this delicious crunch sound. Of course, modern players like Vinny use them all over the place. Anyway, in the flam paradiddle, you're optimizing between the molar style consecutive ride cymbal note thing with both hands 
and the elegance of that brump sound. But I like to do them like this. Two, three. Reason? The three beat phrase allows me to catch both hands. And I like the last sixteenth of the phrase because it's like figure drawing upside down. It removes a layer of familiarity so that you can see the spacing more clearly. Finally, I like to add hats on the eights. Two, three, four. Alan Dawson, the fabled teacher of Tony Williams and many others, had an inkling he should spice things up. So he invented the rudimental ritual, a start-to-finish liturgy that utilized all 26 essential rudiments and the entire kit. Sort of like carrying water buckets for pie May, I imagine it was part utility, part talisman. And by the way, for a deeper discussion of talismans and placebos and drumming, for good or ill, I'll link to a lesson below that I made on that. And recently, Anakin Nilas has been experimenting with making full kit exercises out of physical challenges, though her approach hews more closely to utility. Anyway, reason number two why practicing rudiments, even if they had zero utility, can sometimes be cool. It was right here. Carry the three. Okay, I lost it. But I think we covered two good ones. It breaks you out of a rut, and it's like gardening. And it can be fun to feel your hands doing something unfamiliar. Which is kind of the same thing as it breaks you out of your ruts. Anyway, rudiment the fourth. Flam dragadiddles. Ah, the humble drag. Drag paradiddles feel like kinetics in, uh, motion. Is that redundant? Anyway, adding flams on top of it kind of gives you a rudiment souffle. Everything good about rudiments in a single rudiment. You've got controlling the bounce. You've got the paradiddle aspect. And you've got the flam. So to do a basic flam dragadiddle, I'd move the accent to the last 16th for the same reason we did before. It gives the object a novel orientation so you're more likely to perceive detail. Two, three, four. And to incorporate that into the full kit, we're going to use the same shape we did with the basic flam paradiddle. Two, three, four. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this lesson and you've been checking the channel out for a hot second, you might be ready to go a little bit deeper. Maybe you're ready to study with me. And if that's the case, I recommend my courses. The coaching course, the practice course, and the solo course, all of which we only open up a few times a year and all of which are only available to people on my mailing list. To get on my mailing list, simply click below the player, enter your email in on the next page, and I'll send you a bribe. Three free videos that'll make you playing better in the next three weeks than it's gotten in the previous six months. Dudes, it's been real. Always enjoy these, and we're out. I hope we have some B-roll for this. You think anyone would buy stools from a store called Stool Sample? What? I don't understand. This stool sample is we have stool and you get sample of it. Oh, we're about to lose the battery too. Good times. Practice pad speaking. It's funny how fired up I get to do these. Oh, maybe we should get these pennies off of here. What do you think? Oh, did I mention? Pad cam. See you in the future. <laughs> I need a new sign off.